What is going on, Griddle Nation? Today is a very special episode, uh, not just for the show, but for me personally. I'm hanging out with the one and the only, the legend, the goat, Mr. Norman Van Aken. <laughs> Chef Norman Van Aken uh, has invited me down to Miami. We're gonna cook some fun stuff together. In this video, I wanna show you something that I like to do. Sometimes, and I feel like people do this at home, they overthink. When they try to do something really elegant, really nice, they think by adding a bunch of stuff to it yep. is what makes it mm. good, but simple. Keep simple. it simple. Keep keep it simple, yes. stupid. I know that. Yeah. yeah. Let's do a simple summer salmon salad. That was too many S's. That's terrible. <laughs> Kiss. Kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. <laughs> So we're gonna definitely keep it simple. Uh, I'm gonna start in a vinaigrette. Norman, why don't you go ahead and cut that red onion? Okay. Uh, the trick with red onion, I don't know if you do this often. Do you pickle red onions very often? Often. Yeah? Yeah. Getting them really, really thin. Red onion, actually all onions are extremely porous and they'll soak up whatever you give them. Uh, you just gotta give them a little bit of time. One of my signature dishes includes a topping of pickled red onions and stuff. Oh, how do you pickle them? Sugar, red wine vinegar, that's it. Yeah. That'll do it, yep. And some time, I mean T-I-M-A time, yeah. Uh, I'm adding some coriander to some champagne vinegar. A little bit of coriander and uh, oh, I need some oil. A little bit of olive oil. Mm -hmm. I think uh, for burgers, for anything I do, pickling your onions beforehand, it's, it's another level. And one of the things I love to talk about with people who love to get into cooking is mm -hmm. vinegars and the vast uh, oh, yeah. opportunities that are in, within vinegar. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people think balsamic is the only sort of special vinegar. Oh, but, yeah. I oh, mean, no, citrus vinegar. All kinds. Well, I think too, uh, a lot on the show we talk about having a well-balanced dish. I'm just mm -hmm. throwing a little bit of uh, fresh oregano. I'm not even chopping it up. I want this to be simple and easy. I want this to be like one of those go-to weeknight dishes. Oh, there we go, heck yeah. Yeah, we talk a lot about having a well-balanced dish and having a little bit of acidity mm -hmm. goes a long way. Mm -hmm. And I think people oh, just yeah. think vinegar flavor, but that's not, that's not what it is. No. Almost always when I'm asking for the chefs to do is make sure the acidity is very mm -hmm. bright. You want to give a dish structure. Yeah. You know? It's funny, I, I say that, I, I get in the comments every once in a while, I'll say things like it's a very bright flavor, mm -hmm. a hearty flavor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How would you describe to someone who's not particularly sure what a bright flavor is? I think it makes you sit up straight. Huh, that's a great way to say it. So you taste it. You yeah, one of those? Yeah, it gives you, you know, you say a, something, a dish gives you, uh, flavors give you structure. Uh -huh. It's the structure almost of you, your spine sitting up straight. If it causes your body to move in a particular way, it's having the effect that you want. Huh. More onion? I don't think so. I think okay. that's good. I'm going to get one of these spoons. Oh, I lost my whisk. Man down, we're good. Good thing we got more um, whisks. Yeah, we do need some fruit juice. So I brought lemon and grapefruit. I'm going to leave that one up to you. What do you think about using both? Well, we're in Florida, so grapefruit sounds kind of nice to me. All right, I'll do the lemon, you do the grapefruit. All right, so we're gonna, you're gonna squeeze this through a... Yeah, I think we just juice it. I have a little uh, sieve right there. For you. Okay, you want that going in the vinaigrette? I think so. Okay. That's exactly what I want to do. I'm gonna do the old hand trick on this one. So oh, there you go. And fish. You get some in your eye? <laughs> Not yet. Were you aiming? <laughs> if I were to aim, I'd miss. <laughs> <laughs> this is a nice juicy one. Oh, dang, it is. It smells great. So vinaigrette, I mean, really, simply, it's the uh, the balance between the fat of the oil and the acidity of the citrus in this mm -hmm. case, and the vinegar in this case. Yeah. So it's not. This is not a true pickle. We're not actually pickling the onion. However, if you if you did this the night before, in my opinion, tomorrow those onions are going to be banging like mm -hmm. crazy, crazy good. Uh, but we're just doing this a quick one. So um, let's. I think we're good. Let's just keep cruising. Do um, you want to do the tomatoes mm. and the cucumber? These tomatoes? Uh, I'm going to work on the corn. Yeah, so I'm okay. using some Roma tomatoes and some little heirloom uh, grape tomatoes as well. Do you have an opinion on Roma tomatoes? I feel like they have less seeds, and for a dish like this, I'm a fan of that. Less seeds, good. Yeah. I you know, so. there's bitterness in the seeds, too. So. Yeah. So what shape do we want these in? I don't know, let's do a little bite size. Bite little dices. Does that work? While you're doing that, uh, so I've got some fresh corn. I'm not going to cook this corn. I want it fresh. Fresh corn. I'm going to do a little shingles. So what I'm going to do, take my knife right down the cob. And see how we're getting some big pieces? It's not as big as shingles as I wanted, Norman. That's a big bicolor corn. There we go. We're not getting shingles. We're doing uh, just corn. Cut off the cob. 
That looks good. I want this fresh, bright crunch and the sweetness. You know, we were talking about a well-balanced salad, well-balanced flavors. Mm -hmm. We've got that vinegar in there. We have the sweet coming in. We're gonna have a lot of savory from the fish. What are you gonna get to next? Let me throw this corn right in the salad. And it's also gonna give us some crazy beautiful color. Oh, George. I am an absolute fan of heat, mm. Norman. Mm -hmm. Are you? you want, oh, you by want all means. Got, okay. If you didn't want the heat, uh, you could take out the pith uh, and the seeds to remove some of that heat, but I want it. Yeah, I mean, people take the seeds out as a matter of course, and I was working with a Mexican uh, chef, Santa Banez is his last name, and he was like, you Americans, why do you buy chilies and then take out the chilies? <laughs> <laughs> and I, now I always say, take out the, the seeds if you wish. Do you remember the first time when you had a hot pepper, like when you were a little kid? Did it wake you up, shock you? You know, I'm from the Midwest. I didn't have a hot pepper until I was probably 19. And, you know, I was a, I took me some adjustment. Yeah. But now it's like, now I'm just like good, good with it all. Now, how about some of this? I say the same thing. Let's do the same thing. Yeah, while okay. you're doing that, I'm going to get to the salmon. Now I have a beautiful hunk of fish right here. So salmon for me is incredibly versatile, crazy, crazy delicious. So I want to celebrate the flavor of salmon. So we're not going to do a ton to this. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to make some nice large dices. I think this is way too much salmon for us to eat for lunch. Norman? You know, but if we, they cook it, we cook it, and then we have some leftover cooked salmon, then we can make, you know, salmon sandwiches the next day. How would you make a salmon sandwich? I've never done a salmon sandwich. Well, since you're dicing it up and then we're gonna caramelize it on the Blackstone, yeah. um, I think I would make it like I would make a, a tuna fish salad sandwich uh, with okay. a little bit of mayonnaise and some you know, celery, onion, pickle. That's a good idea. I uh, feel like, especially some of my friends, Let's one of whom might be here shaking. and shall remain nameless, oh. don't eat fish enough. Do you ever have people in your life that say, oh, I don't like that thing or... Oh, all the time. How do, how do you, like if, if someone told you, I don't like fish, how do you respond to that person? Because it's, for me, I, I have two, one of two things. If you don't like something at home, I feel like it's one of two reasons. One, you truly don't like it, or two, you've never had it made properly. Right. Right? Uh, there are very few things that I don't, is there anything you don't like? Things made improperly. Yeah? I got one. I'm not a fan of caviar. Or how? Oh, he didn't like that one. <laughs> Real good caviar? Out. If we go eat caviar together, I am gonna give it a go. It's not that it's not good. Yeah. Huh. It's not my, not my thing, I guess. Well, you know, you're saving yourself a little bit of money if it's not. <laughs> it's true. I'm gonna crank my heat up to medium, medium high heat. Uh, I'm gonna hit, let's just go ahead and season right here on the board. So can you see I've got these gorgeous, big pieces of diced fish. We're gonna hit that with a bit of salt and some pepper, a little bit of oil here. I like doing this, just doing it right on the board. It's fun. I know here's something that might raise a few eyebrows, but I'm okay with that. I'm gonna be using garlic powder here. Yep. Um, now fresh garlic, obviously, it has a much better flavor, but I want the powder for a different reason. I'm gonna get some of the, um, some of the same characteristics of fresh garlic. However, do you see the consistency of that? What we're gonna get is a better color on the salmon. This is gonna be a really, really quick sear. I want it to say medium medium rare, and that little bit, Ethan, if I hold that up, can you see, it's almost like a tiny little crust on the outside, and that's the side that I wanna get that really beautiful, beautiful color, get that beautiful contrast. Mm -hmm. but you know, I'm gonna have to switch places. Is yep. it hot enough? Yeah, we're oh, not. I'd crank that up to high. Right. Let's, let's crank it. Let's get this thing screaming, set to stun. There we go. <laughs> uh, grab some of that oil. Give me yeah. a, one little shot. I was eight years old the first time I had seafood, which oh. has a Floridian, that's kinda sad. What was it? Mussels. We were on vacation and my mom, you know my mom. Oh yeah. Yeah, she's lovely, wonderful. Met you the same day. That's true. Uh, she stole the show. She's more famous Mom's and wise too. than both of us. Mom's too. Um, so she ordered mussels. I don't think she liked them. I think she was trying to gross out my sisters or something. Uh, and I remember everyone going, oh, that's gross. I'm not going to eat it. And being this eight-year-old kid was like, I'll do it. I'm eating it. And I remember eating it and loving it, mm. and then feeling weird that I loved something that I wasn't supposed to. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's a w weird thing. My Can first you? seafood? What was your first? Yeah. Fish sticks. Frozen? Of course. Of this course. is Paul's, you know. Here we go. Friday in uh, the Midwest. Oh, that's what we want. With enough tartar sauce to choke a horse. <laughs> you gotta cover up the burnt hot dog flavor. <laughs> now we're caramelizing, right? There we go. 
All right, that only needs, only needs a couple minutes. Can you see how it's, the cook is already starting to creep up the side? We don't want that to go up too high because we do want some of this beautiful texture. I mean, this is salmon. If, if you don't like fish, I get that you might freak out a little bit, but you can eat salmon raw. You ever seen Castaway? I've actually, have you done that? Eat salmon raw? Well, I mean like caught a fish out in the wild and just like gone full Tom Hanks on it. In Hawaii. Yeah? Yeah. How was it? Well, awesome. what was it? Tuna. Yeah, right amazing? off the boat, sun was going down, oh. the fisherman picked up a tuna and we had it right then. Very, very dramatic. amazing. So what I'm noticing right away is that you're not moving the fish. Oh, no, no. We don't want to move it. For me, I do want the texture, which means I need this the temperature. That's why having a, a screaming hot flat top is really important for this, because I want the full sear. I mean, doing this on a traditional grill on the grates, you're kind of only getting that sear on one little bit here. It's almost like pan frying. You could cook scallops the same way if you didn't like salmon. Oh, I did, I do recently, it was a scallop caprese. It's awesome. Yeah. It's really good, but I did like a tomatoes and, and a balsamic thing on it. I haven't done scallops in a while. I want to do a um, ceviche with CJ. We want to go fishing, want to catch some beautiful fish on the boat, do ceviche. Dial he, me up. He won't, I was going to say he, he won't be interested. Dial me up, I'll come up for that one. Oh my nice, goodness, nice, that nice. is what we're looking for. Now the garlic powder, this is where the garlic powder comes into play because uh, earlier you saw the kind of crust that was on it. That's the garlic powder getting crustier, crunchier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give this one touch and we are going to finish this instead of this. Do we have any more of that lemon? Yeah. Oh, that grape, let's do the grapefruit. This is a little grapefruit over the top. Let that caramelize down. I uh have. -huh. Oh yeah, go for it, right on the fish. Like deep glazing. Oh, beautiful. All right. All right, the last piece of this puzzle, um, actually, Norman, bring all of that beauty right yep. into this bowl. Now, it. here's the part where you want to be a little ginger, a little gentle. Here? Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that right there. Come on. Ethan, look at this. That is Ooh. magic. That's magic. I'm going to steal that bite, Norman. Uh, so this First is kind of where uh, we want to mix everything together. This is where everything starts to kind of become magic. The savory, the sweet, the little bit of spicy, the vinegar, the acidity. We have everything that the palate wants. We want to be really gentle here. We don't want to break up our salmon. All right, let's plate this, my friend. All right, you want to, you want your own bowl or are we gonna, we're gonna share? I'll take a bowl. All right, let me give another bowl then. Jeez, sorry, man. Since I took my glove off, uh, maybe you can I'll, I'll it I'll plate, I'll plate. Okay. Nature's now, today we're having this like a la minute Oh, Warm yeah. salmon, cool veg, but would you also serve this cool? You could. I, I feel like the little bite of warm salmon mm -hmm. is where the magic is. Mm -hmm. um, That's yeah, you could do sold. Let's just put some caviar on top there. And we'll some. <laughs> uh, oh man, that's beautiful. You know, on a hot summer day, chilling by the pool, we didn't bring any beer. Nice cold beer with this would be nice. Or bourbon or something. We're gonna Uber some beer wow. over here. Wow! Come on. Look at that. Come on, Norman. Can we try it? Yeah, absolutely. Get some forks right over there. Grab me oh. one. Oh, heck to the yes. Thank you, my friend. Nice. What are you going for first, the fish or? Of I course. A little, little bit of. Right away. I'm going to I have to try everything. Okay. Mmm. Mm-hmm. When you, when you cook the fish mm -hmm. fast and furious like that, mm -hmm. it maintains that beautiful texture. Mm -hmm. It's the magic of salmon. You do salmon a lot? Well, you do a lot of fish, obviously. I love salmon. Um, we don't have it locally, so it's more of a you know, celebration dish for me. Like, especially when I'm traveling. Oh my God, yeah. What else, uh, what other fish would you do in a dish like this? Well, let's see. Pompano, mm. swordfish, mm. Um, mahi. Those would be three that come to mind. Mahi would be fantastic. And there's others that are less well known, like barrel fish, that would be nice. What's barrel fish? It's a Florida fish. Looks like a barrel. Oh, it's like a, a firm mm -hmm. barrel fish. And you know, it's not well known yet. Mm -hmm. So the price is well crazy. All, this is, this all is so delicious. 12 of my uh, viewers out there. <laughs> gonna They're going to go get the barrel. Gonna... <laughs> Ask for Kelly. He's the fisherman to get it from. Thank you so much for hanging out, Norman. Uh, there are times in your life, I talk about the culinary journey quite a lot. Uh, we talked a little bit about some food memories. Um, for me, the journey of where you're going on your culinary destination is more important than getting to the end. 
Um, in my opinion, Norman is kind of the pinnacle of excellence when it comes to food, and I'm, I don't know that I'll ever get to that point, but I'm enjoying the journey getting there. You have a great mindset, my friend. Thank you. He didn't disagree. Did you notice that? I meant about <laughs> how the journey's a thing, not the kudos to okay. me. Uh, <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much for uh, for hanging out. This was a really fun one. It's such a pleasure to have uh, someone like Norman on the show. Check out Norman's stuff. He has some amazing books out there. My Key West Kitchen is my favorite. Ah, nice. Uh, maybe as a Floridian, I love Key West, and that's why. But it's a good one. And if you're not following him on Instagram, uh, it's at Norman Van Aken, right? Yep. No eyes in Van Aken. Just Norman yeah. Van Aken. Yeah, we'll put text on the screen. Uh, really, really fun stuff. And he's doing a, it's, is it called Cooking with Norman, right? Yeah, we're doing yep. a cooking school, uh, cooking classes yeah. virtually. And the big news of the month is that we just signed the lease on our new Normans in Orlando, which will be opening up uh, maybe by February. You want to know the recipe together? I would ne love it. Next time you cook, and, and I'll try not to mess it up. You can be my sous chef. Oh. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys in the next video.